mayor, the city council, and even the dog catcher. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. Governor Brown has recognized this driest winter in California history by declaring a drought emergency. The Sierra snowpack is at 15% of its annual average, and that could leave Central Valley farmers with no allocation from water districts at all. Here's peach farmer Troy Regeer. There's a chance this year we will, from what I'm hearing, that we'll get no, we might get none. And that means more pumping, and like I say, the pumps are pumping less because the water table is going down. and it's scary because you have to go deeper and the pump guys are already there's already wells going dry last year so if you're not in a good location that has a good access to your aquifer or, you know the depth you, you have to go deeper then you're you could be on a waiting list and you're you can lose a lot of trees and fruit is that statewide we are seeing you know after three years of uh, below normal rainfall we're seeing fires burning um, with extreme intensity. Um, obviously, the uh, fire this week in Los Angeles County, really traditional Santa Ana wind-driven fire, but also, even without the wind, the, the, the dry fuel, the vegetation, was really fueling that fire uh, to the intensity that we would normally see in August. And obviously, what adds to this this year is uh, in Northern California, um, we had a fire in Humboldt County, one of the wettest areas in the country. Up near the Oregon burned, border. Correct, and uh, not far from the coast. And it burned over 330 acres in the first week of January. That That is very telling for the kinds of conditions we're seeing across the state that we would not normally have. So we, we have about 5,000 permanent personnel, mostly permanent firefighters. We are beginning to hire back seasonal firefighters in Northern California to help supplement uh, that. And then we actually have not laid off many of our seasonal firefighters at all in Southern California because the fire threat has just continued. Uh, so again, with the governor's uh, drought declaration, um, he has really lent his support uh, in that declaration uh, to include the firefighting resources that we need to meet. Paradox here is that it's the sort of thing we see in mainstream medicine where the more they apply their programs, the more they have to apply their programs to really cover the damage their programs did in the first place. <laughs> oh boy, that's never a good, uh, ne never good way of going about things. So, so oh. you, you, so what you've said so far is almost like, okay, they've opened up Pandora's box and now they're like, they're rushing to try to close it again, kind of. It, to some degree, again, right now, I think that they, I, I believe they entered these programs believing as psychotic people do, that they could continue this without consequence because they put so much effort into conditioning the population to accept this as natural. From even as I put in my presentations last, they put these into kids' animated films and, and it, it, it's everywhere so that it starts to just become normal for people and they accept this. And, and I, I truly believe that they felt they could manipulate the Earth's climate systems for an indefinite period of time, and they now know that that is not going to happen. And it's the game is changing by the day, and I believe now the power structure's hand is being forced, if you will, that they are having to ramp up their time frames for whatever agendas they've had. And I, I think even events that would seem disconnected, for example, what's happening in Ukraine right now, mm -hmm. and the sort of toppling of nations that our country is engaged in, and uh, although our media paints a very different picture, we see our certainly the, the Western powers hand and and all this this disruption with other countries. And I, I think that they're really speeding up their agendas because as the curtain gets pulled back and as people with this one issue with geoengineering, as, as the critical mass of population realizes what has happened, that they have their health has been permanently compromised. In many cases, uh, you know, kids with with autism, people with Alzheimer's, so forth, that there will be a fury and a panic in society that will be unstoppable. And I think the power structure knows this. They're preparing for it. We have the, the 2.2 billion rounds of 40 caliber hollow point that's been ordered. You know, people should be clearly alarmed as hell about that. And I think a lot of preparations are being made, Heinrich. I think they're being made as fast as, as the power structure can make them. In the meantime, most, much of the American public still sleeps. It's not possible without climate engineering. And in fact, 
I'm, I'm posting four NOAA maps in an article I should have out tomorrow that show exactly the scenario you just outlined. It's, it's meteorologically speaking, it's, it's simply hard to believe that such a map could be pinned, let alone be real. But that's what you have. And so people on the East Coast, and there's highly populated areas there, so there's a lot of people that are being influenced by this colder weather that think, well, there's extremes in every direction. But the, the cold extremes, I would argue, and I believe data supports completely, are being engineered from top to bottom. We know that the snow is being nucleated. We know that for a fact. And it doesn't mean there's not natural snow in places, but we know that storms are heavily nucleated. We have lab tests to prove it. So at this point, the, whether the western U.S. is a climate sacrifice zone, being that as they're keeping this dome of high pressure over the west, it's diverted the jet stream up through Alaska, and then it pinwheels in a clockwise motion back down, carrying cool air with it, and they're nucleating that moisture. So they pick up moisture from the Pacific, they pump it up through Alaska. Alaska, by the way, just had its warmest January on record. Now, this is something that media simply doesn't cover. Why? Because they're no longer talking about global warming. They simply want to hide it. So Alaska just had its warmest January on record, and that, that air then pumps down, but they're able to cool off parts of the lower 48 with heavy nucleation. And California, again, might be a climate sacrifice zone. But it, it appears other agendas are being carried out with the drought in California. For example, there's, there's a quest by the feds to lock down water rights, lock down control over, over people's ability to sustain themselves here. With agricultural land, you have multinational corporations that seem to be snapping up the land of the private farmer that can't support himself with no water anymore. And, we saw similar circumstances happen in Australia where huge regions were droughted out so bad from the climate engineering programs and the whole region sold for pennies on the dollar, whole pounds, and big multinational ag bought it up, now the rain's falling. In Africa, over previous decades, these countries that have been droughted out again and again that they attribute to climate change, we believe geoengineering is the more likely scenario because the atmosphere carries 7% more moisture for every degree of warming. It should be raining more, not less. And the term climate change, when did they implement that term? They implemented it in 99, approximately 98, 99, when, I, when, the, when the geoengineering programs were really unleashed uh, on a much larger scale. So they had to have a term that conditioned people to think that these gargantuan swings in weather from day to day were somehow part of what was naturally unfolding. Couldn't be further from the truth. So people have been conditioned again and again and again where without these climate engineering programs and the short-term cooling events they cause, the, the warming would be much more protracted. And I believe, again, I believe we're very close to them not being able to manipulate people's perception. Some contacts we have in Mexico indicated that Mexico had pushed back, didn't want this happening in their airspace. And there seemed to have been a cessation of the spraying over Mexico for a time. And then this, the uh, swine flu outbreak happened, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. And immediately after the spraying ensued, so was that, was that all connected? Perhaps. And, and we saw similar circumstances in Ireland where the, those are the only two countries who really had any data that seemed credible at all, that they were pushing back against these programs. Then Ireland was financially crushed. So it's, this is, the, the gravity of these programs cannot be overstated. This is the, the biggest hammer of all. And even Snowden, did you, did you happen to see the Snowden release that although some try to discredit it, I feel it was valid re relating to geoengineering. Did you mm -hmm. see that? Yeah, I did. And I feel that that release was, was credible and that the document Snowden referred to said exactly what we would expect a government document of that nature to state, that if, if not for these programs, the climate system would fly apart within a year and they went on to make other statements. And they also called this the crown jewel of the U.S. defense system. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, it's really the ultimate weapon uh, because you can win a war without firing a shot. So, and, and from the, the perspective of those in power who feel they have to control everything, yes, it's called double collapse scenario. From their perspective, if you stop geoengineering once you start, and this is what they try to sell us also, that the climate backlash would be horrific. And, and that's correct. When you keep a lid on a boiling kettle and you, you pop it off, there can be a splash. But that's the only choice. No matter how violent the Earth's response, it's trying to cool itself. It's trying to right itself. It's trying to reach equilibrium. And, and anything but allowing it to do that 
is pure folly, especially when we're talking about killing the ecosystem. And, and these particulates are, are virtually killing the boreal forests. They're, they're toxifying oceans, sea life, marine life. There was a study of whales in 2010, 1,000 whales from around the globe that had, according to the report, report and I quote directly, jaw-dropping levels of aluminum in these whales. There's nowhere you can hide from this, and our boreal forests are virtually imploding. Uh, aluminum, effective bioavailable aluminum on organisms like trees is, is fairly well documented. They shut down nutrient uptake to avoid this toxin. It affects their DNA. So instead of boreal forests thriving from increased rainfall and more acidity in the rain, they're, they're imploding. The ecosystem is imploding. So now the forests, instead of being carbon sinks, they're carbon sources. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's just, you know, from top to bottom, these programs are absolutely derailing every natural response mechanism on the planet. I found photos of the U.S. or the, the Soviet weather modification scientists touring the U.S. in 1968, height of the Cold War, touring the U.S. weather modification facilities. Clearly collaboration at the height of the Cold War. But now, we just had last fall, when the IPCC report came out, largest scientific panel in human his history, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Russia asked them to address geoengineering. There wasn't going to be a single word about geoengineering in that report, but Russia asked them to. So is it possible now that Russia is having second thoughts about these programs? It, and we see a tremendous lashing out at Russia right now. Yeah, certainly. In country, yeah. correct? So is it possible that there's a fraying in the power structure, that the, that the totality of what's uh, unfolding here is starting to at least... Uh, appear to certain people, and I, I think at that point, the fact that, that Putin asked them to address this issue is, a, is, is well worth note, and it's a, it's a sign of sanity that we do not see coming from our government. And are the events in Kiev related to this? Perhaps. Perhaps. So it's, at this point, there's enough data to know, and there's some recent science study that indicates clearly, due to simply the disruption of the hydrological cycle alone, not only do we know now that geoengineering is not working, we know it can't work. It cannot work. So, but when they're, when they're completely invested in this, and when the consequences of this word getting out are considered, they will try to hide it as long as they can, because you have a population that I believe would want to hunt down anyone and everyone involved in these programs if they really knew. And I think that they will hide it to the last minute. But if we can... If we can reach critical mass and get this out in the open, I think our, our paradigm will take a, a big turn in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, Putin uh, doesn't seem to be uh, as easily controlled and, and willing to play ball as the others, at least. Uh, again, it's very yep. difficult to kind of determine what actually is going on and who's pulling the strings. But Russia has done a lot of measures in the last uh, 10, 15 years, really, that suggest that they want to remain more uh, sovereign, shall we say. I agree. I agree. And I... Right now, I, I, I think, uh, I, I mean, how, when you see John Kerry stand up and, and say that no country has the right to interfere with another country's sovereign affairs, <laughs> how, deep, how deep can the hypocrisy go? Oh, my God. It's it's right when we do it and when the NATO intervene and the, the quote-unquote allied or whatever. But when anyone else does it, Russia in that case, it's it's just wrong, right? That's the logic we're <laughs> expected to, it, to, to accept here. I don't have the words for, for watching him. You know, I, I can hardly stand to look at him, you know, and, yeah. and uh, so... But I think the world is waking up to this quite rapidly, and if, if the dollar is lost as a global reserve currency, that's going to change the game immediately as well. But, but right now, the climate unraveling alone, I believe, can't be hidden much longer, and, and it's just a race, again, a race to the intersection of, of whether we get word out in time or whether they drop another shoe on us, because I, I don't know what, at this point, the power structure being more cornered every day, what are they capable of? What will they do? I think that's a grave question.